All right, so now I'm going to show you how to do UVs in Blender, and I'll let you decide which one you want to do. I know Blender is kind of hard for a new student to kind of work with, but this skull is pretty simple, so it'd be a great example. First off, making sure the subtool is all one subtool; they're at the same level divide, etc. and so forth. If you followed all the video so far, you should have that. And I'm just going to go down here to this export, okay? Where I'm going to export just um, no texture, quad poly, merge, group, and the scale is at one. Very important. The scale is at one. Okay. Export. So what I would do here is use your natural hard drive space if you're on a Mac to do this. The reason being that uh, Blender is a complete pain to navigate with. So okay down below I have Blender. This is a default square. X on the keyboard to get rid of it. File import wait for an object. Here's the ever so lovely interface. So what I did is I saved that here just so I can get to it by clicking on the dots. I'm going to clamp scale at zero. There we go. Okay, now let me get my bearings. Okay, good. See, that wasn't bad. Um, so here's how to navigate. Alt, middle mouse button. Allows you to rotate. Alt, shift. Allows you to translate. Alt, control. Allows you to zoom. This is all with the middle mouse button. Okay, so that's the hardest thing that gets across to the students. It's because you're in a whole new program and the navigation is all different and that hurts you beyond belief. But, get over it. That's what we do. Let's go and right click on it. Go to edit mode. And then what we're going to do here is go to the edge. I'm going to pick an edge. And if I click Alt, while I'm clicking on it, notice it goes all the way around. Okay, so that's a good sign. Okay, again, I gotta get my bearings here along with you. Here's a good way to do this. L allows you to highlight this. Select inverse, hide. So now I can hide the bottom jaw and not worry about it. Not yet anyway. So where do I want this seam? Well, I want this seam to kind of go all the way around. And I think it would be easier for me just to highlight it by na my nature because I, that way I can really kind of show you where to place the seam at. So the idea of seams are to hide them. You do not want them apparent. So what better then in the back of the skull towards the middle. Holding shift, I'm going to go and highlight these all the way up to the front. Just like that. Control E, mark seam. Okay. Now, if you go here, right on this line and right click, you can split area. And then I can choose UV image editor. Just to test out this, I'm going to hit L and then U on the keyboard, unwrap, and sure enough, it unwraps it. And you can see it unwraps it really well. Okay, that's good. So now what I'm going to do is reveal the bottom 
And you can see the bottom is horrible. Again, highlight one component, hit L, select inverse, hide. And in this case, I'm going to do the bottom jaw. And the bottom jaw is really, really super easy. Again, I want to hide the seam. ZBrush wanted to put the seam in an area that was kind of stupid in the fact that the teeth would have got messed up. So I want my normal map and displacement map and everything else to be nice. So I'm going to have to put it here on the bottom half of the jaw. Away from the teeth. Control E, mark seam. Don't get greedy with trying to highlight the entire area for seams. Only highlight the area that you have that you can get to. If you mess up, you got clear seam. That's control E too. Once in a while you might grab a part and move it around, just right click and it cancels out that. I think you see me do this every once in a while. <laughs> okay. If I Control Command Z or Control Z, it'll undo that. That's my used to clicking with the right mouse button or left mouse button. Anytime you click with the left mouse button, it interacts with the component and moves it. You can move it along. Again, just one of those things you have to. Yep, see, see did it right there. It's just one of those things that you got to get used to is hopping around in different programs. You ask any senior uh, level modeler and they will tell you that they probably know about three or four programs by heart. Okay, there we go. Um, L on the keyboard, U unwrap, good except for this area does not look so good right here and which leads me to this okay with that on I can highlight the components on one side and it'll show me on the other side what's wrong with them in this case it does not like what I did here Okay, I don't know if I even need this seam to be honest with you. So I gotta take this off. And Alt allows me to click in that area all the way around. Control E, clear seam. L, U, unwrap. And that looks so much better. That means all the detail is going to be in this area, however. So, is that enough texture room? Again, what is that area? It's over here. So, yes, it is enough room. All the major area should be around this area right here. Good. So, I can reveal this and together hit L you unwrap and it'll unwrap both of them together now over here I have the ability to highlight islands um, that is out of sync mode L L and now I have the ability to have UV island select well, this allows me to R on the keyboard, rotate these pieces. G on the keyboard allows me to move the pieces. S allows me to scale them ever so slightly in. And what I want to do is get these as big as I can.
and I want to keep them uniform too however you know if one's about I look at the size of the polygons here and I look at the size of the polygons here uh, I want to keep them within the same scale All right, so maybe just rotate both of these just a little bit this way. Scale them up. And all I'm looking for is a way to get these as big as possible on this map. There we go. That's as big as I can get them. Okay, so now in the next video I'll show you how to export it back and then put it back into ZBrush and ZBrush will not even be able to tell the difference.